changes that were announced earlier this week from the BHA. And the BHA board has become the sport's ultimate decision-making body as part of a new governance structure for British racing, which was agreed on Monday. Here, uh, here is a, an outline of it. Going out is the members' committee and the executive committee. And then you'll see coming in is the commercial committee, the integrity advisory committee, and the industry programme group. And they all advise the BHA board who will make the final decisions. I'm delighted to say that Joe Somerah Smith, the BHA chair, uh, joins us now uh, to, to, to chat more ab about this news. Joe, I'll, I'll start. You, there will be lots of racing fans, I'm sure, watching the opening show this morning that will want to know how this is going to benefit British racing. What is your answer to that? Well, crucially, the new structure removes the um, power of veto that uh, either the race courses or the thorough, thoroughbred group, the participants had before. And essentially that means that um, anything that any, any of the difficult decisions that frankly the sport has avoided for the last decade um, can come up to the BHA board and we can make a decision for the long-term interests of the sport. Uh, just th th there's a few things to pick up there. So, so hypothetically speaking, uh, you want to cut fixtures, racecourse groups don't. This removes any possibility of future stalemates or, as you say there, uh, any organisation sort of vetoing your decisions? Um, well, it depends what comes up from the commercial committee. So you've got the commercial committee, which has five members from the racecourses, five from the participants, and they will make a recommendation up to the BHA board and the BHA board will then look at that recommendation. But obviously, if it came with a 5-5 split, um, then the BHA board um, can make a decision about that. And we have to look at whether that is in the best term, best long-term interests of the sport. Uh, there, there have been a few people, once this news was announced uh, on social media, that sort of rolled their eyes to the, new, to the news and, and said, well, it's, it sounds good, but the, the practicalities of it, when it's implemented, will, will possibly be in the, in the same situation that we've been in for many years. And I know there's a real urge to change things in light of the current climate, I, I guess. Do, are you confident that the, the necessary changes can be implemented with this in place now? I think so. I mean, I think if you started with a blank sheet of paper, you probably wouldn't actually design the governance of the sport uh, as, as it is now. But we have to deal with the reality of, of who, who owns the fixtures, uh, how the sport is currently structured. I think removing the veto is absolutely vital for this. Um, I do keep saying that the people involved in the process are, speak, are talking a very good game, uh, but it's deeds, not words. And it, when it actually comes to it, if everybody just reaches for their lawyers, um, it, will be, it will be a test of this structure. So currently, it looks like it's a much better structure, but um, it actually has to be tested in real life. So, with that in mind, what would your sort of call to the industry be then? Well, I think, I mean, we have had that discussion with, with all the people involved in the decision making of the sport. And we've put together a structure that we think will allow us to make good decisions. Um, but I think, uh, you know, my call to everybody is that um, we all, work, all need to work together. We all recognise the challenges facing the sport. And the reason we've put this in is to allow us to make decisions that will actually put the sport in a much better, a much better place over the next decade or two decades. Joe, appreciate your time with us on the opening show this morning. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ollie.